Welcome to Watercolour Splashes. I'm Lorraine Brown and my artist life is all about watercolour. There is never just one way to paint. In Watercolour Splashes I will show you what works for me. Tips, techniques and experiments that you can try for yourself. Be inspired. Let's Watercolour Splash. In this Watercolour Splashes demo, this won't be a step-by-step -step because I'm actually going to use this image um, that was provided by Susan Kravitz um, of Beautiful White Peony. And I'm going to try and um, paint without um, very much drawing, trying to compose maybe as I go. But even when I paint in that manner, I do a fair bit of prep first. So of course I've got my inspiration. I might choose uh, which way I'm going to do my painting. And because um, when I'm filming, it's harder to do a half sheet going up this way and get it all on um, camera. I'm actually going to paint it in a landscape format, even though this particular image uh, was taken in portrait, doesn't make any difference. I can turn it this way. I'm actually going to use the flowers to give me the shapes but try and build up something interesting around it. I love painting my florals this way. It allows a lot of freedom, but of course there are always times where it doesn't work out. If it doesn't work out, I've had fun doing it. I've learned from bits and pieces that I've put on my painting and I will just start again. I'm going to be um, using these colors. I've already had a little play here because I want to get um, a nice bright um, mauvey pinky colour for the um, peony edges in places that I can see them. I can see a nice glow on them so I need some sort of yellow for that. I'm obviously going to have to make greens which is not a colour that I love but you know, obviously in a floral painting you're going to need them but you can still tone green which is really good. So I've already had this little play and I'll show you what I've come up with. Now I may well change my mind as I get going. If I find it's not working for me, then of course I'm not going to carry on using those colors and I might go into something else. Um, if I make any changes um, in the description of the video, I'll try and um, put in there what it is that I've done. So for that lovely bright glow that I was talking about, I've chosen this Nickel Arzo Yellow from Daniel Smith. I've got um, a dark green up here, which I'm actually loving at the moment because it's called Shadow Green and it's by Holbein. So that makes a really lovely dark grey green. Then just for something a bit different here, I've picked this tube of Lunar Violet by Daniel Smith. Now this is sort of really a granulating out with black pigment in it, but leaning towards a violet side. So I'm hoping to be able to use that maybe for my shadows. For my bright um, red that I'm going to need, purpley red, I've gone for this bright violet from Holbein. That's a beautiful color. And for one other green to brighten things up if I need it, I've got this Daniel Smith Green Gold. Now with those colors there, I've had a little play and I've been able to come up with an idea that this stage that they're going to work for me. I can do green leaves um, using this green and the yellow. I can do a brighter green leaves. I can use this for my centers. For my shadows, which is really the part that's the trickiest because I struggle sometimes with shadows on white things and they perhaps look dirty or they might look too blue. I try and get them so they're actually going to go in with the painting, which means it's really good if you can make them up with colours that are already in there. But with this, um, what's it, Luna Violet here, really weak, makes a soft purpley grey, which of course you can still purple up a little bit more by dropping a bit of the bright violet in there. So there, that's even brighter um, purpley shadow. And I can put the yellow in a little bit down here, which likes to swim around very quickly, where I see the shadows being more um, yellowy gray. 
So I think that's going to work for me. So as I say, if I get going and I change my mind, um, that's, uh, that's what it's like to be painting on the go and making these decisions. But I like to have some theory first, hoping that I've got most of the things worked out. So I'm going to be painting on a half sheet. Um, I'm going to do it in landscapes and I can fit it on the video. I'm not going to talk while I, while I paint this because I want to be able to just be in the moment and see where things are going and act very quickly. Uh, but I'll try and add comments where I can. One little useful tip um, that I'm hoping is going to help. Here is the coloured photo, but I've printed it or photocopied it into black and white. So when I have it in black and white, I can easily see where shadows are on the um, flowers, as opposed to trying to just work out what color they are, I can see how dark they are. So it's a very useful tool to perhaps paint from the black and white photo and not from the colored one. So I'll probably do a bit of a combination of both. I've decided to do just a couple of um, suggested marks for the blooms, just so that I know where to leave the dry paper when I start painting. So I'm looking at the reference image here and seeing whether I like this as a composition or whether I'm going to move something. I love this big bloom here. Um, it doesn't have to face that way. It could face this way down here. Um, and so that's what I think I'll do. So I'm going to use a yellow watercolor pencil so that then that will just meld into the background. And if I put some marks down and I don't like it, of course, they're easily washed away. So I'm going to just do a quick composition of just the um, white shapes so that I know where to leave the unpainted paper. So with some blooms roughly drawn in, the outline drawn in, and I can change those shapes as I get going, I now at least have got a little bit of a plan where not to let the greenery go in because these are basically going to be white blooms. So to paint the background, I will wet around all of the um, bloom shapes so that they stay dry and the background is wet and I can start dropping in colors. here this is where I just um, keep moving around the painting trying for different ideas try little brush marks strokes um, extending a wash reshaping a bit thinking of greenery but not every single um, leaf and I will just keep working around the background not totally finishing it because at some stage I have to go into the flowers but this is helping me reshape the bottoms of the flower so that I can uh, get a shape that I like. I'm using this um, sort of uh, calligraphy type brush, I guess it is, natural hair, only because if I use something that's not my, one of my usual type of watercolour brushes, I tend to paint looser. I don't feel like I'm... Um, using a, um, something that I'm really used to. So 
I'm able to just move around and feel a little bit freer with what I'm doing. So, but at some stage or other, I will swap brushes, perhaps when I want to have a bit more control. But for the moment, while this is working and I'm still uh, getting what I want from it, I will carry on with this brush. I will flit in and out of the blooms now if I feel like I could um, make some sense of them. So I'll probably be going into the flower, out into the background. Um, I don't have a real plan. I just do what feels right at the time. So I'll just put this on to um, just the video and hopefully I can get this into a painting. can see I'm just moving around the painting as a whole trying not to get bogged down in any one area I'm adding darks I'm adding shadowy colors onto the um, very flouncy looking blooms this won't be a realistic painting this will be uh, capturing the essence of these peonies but I will just keep moving around until I feel like I've done enough. If I've got some weird shapes, I have to find ways of resolving those and either making them into the background or trying to make them more flowers. I'm continuing to find places to add interest and just using my reference image to um, see if I'm getting uh, shapes um, that resemble either leaves or buds or the flounces of the uh, blooms. But again, I'm not finishing any one particular part because I'm not quite sure, to be honest, when you make things up as you go, you're not really sure exactly what is needed everywhere. But as you put one part down, something um, seems very obvious as to where the uh, next bit should go. Um, let's get off those little dots there. So, this way of working is very creative. It really engages the mind. And as I say, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, you learn a lot from it because you're really learning how to create something with not a lot of marks, but also making something that pleases you with its color and um, um, composition. Due to other commitments, I've had to leave my painting for two days and I find this very difficult when I'm painting a painting that is intuitively composed. Yes, I'm using a reference photo to get shapes and to know that I'm on the right track for them to perhaps look like uh, peony um, blooms, but I'm basically making all my decisions as I go painting from one stroke to the next. This process for me is far easier if I start it and I work through until I have finished it. It's not generally the sort of thing that I could pick up a day or two later and say, well, this is where I'm up to, let's start again from there. Because in actual fact, you don't know where you are up to. When you paint um, a, a, a finished composition from a photograph, of course you can stop and start. You can see exactly where you're going with the um, next section that you've got to paint but this way it's more of a feeling it's how are the colors going when i put that one down there where will that make the next color go so i'm hoping today with some um, studio time now that i'm actually going to be able to restart my inspiration really for this work 
find my way again with the colours and actually bring it to a completion. So fingers crossed that that's going to work. Um, so um, yes, if it does, you're going to see the finished painting. So I think I've managed to get back into the feeling of this painting. I think I've probably said all that I want to say with it. My peony flowers have got a lot of colour on them considering they are white. Um, however, that makes it far more interesting than just leaving white off the paper. I've obviously had to use a little bit of gouache um, just to correct a couple of areas that I would have liked to have still looked a little bit white. I think I've got enough greenery on there. I really do like to have some splashes and I haven't got any. I've got a couple of dirty marks, so maybe I could turn those into splashes, put a signature on it so that I could leave it alone. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the process as I've painted this. Uh, it's a favorite way of mine to work. It's lovely and loose. You stop when you feel like you have enough there to suggest what it is and uh, obviously to the size of the paper that you're painting. Um, so I think we might call this one done. Bye. Bye.